God saved me, found me, and somebody saw me and they brought me to Jesus. So I sing this song. Still the children cry, but we don't seem to care. We hear the children crying, but we are just standing there. They're reaching out to us. We have the milk to feed, but we are to be first speeches out of many that's finna come. I'm a uh, Texas A&M I have a little football player. I play college basketball, college football in Wyoming. I play basketball first and I play football. Then I become a petroleum engineer. I searched for oil and gas for a long time. Then I think before um, I had a blood clot went through my heart. But there's so many. I need to write a book on this. I got so much. I got so much to talk about. All the way from gangs to the devil disciple biker riders. 
There's a lot of things God is putting into my life right now. I got to bring it out. All right. But I'm going to tell you all the story. Uh, around 1996, I had fell from already 96 feet to my dad. And uh, the 91 Psalm, I read it every day, people. I'm going to tell you, God works. It works, man. I read this 91 Psalm every day. Every day I pray for my family. I pray for my co-workers. And uh, I just really believed in my heart. Spirit with spirit and the truth. You know, you got to combine your heart with your soul and believe in God's going to move mountains for you. Yeah. And he moved mountains that day. When I fell 96 feet, people, I was to the top of this crown of already. Yeah. But, believe it in the word, 91 Psalm, this is my seal. So when I fell, uh, my life started flashing in front of me. A white light appeared in front of me. Like, wow. I said, I'm going to meet Moses because I love the movie Moses. <laughs> that was my favorite movie, Moses. I said, man, I'm going to see Moses today. <laughs> I tell you, I'm going to see Moses. So, uh, all I know, some told me to grab the, grab the uh, cable. And I, and I got in I got the ball. I don't know how I get out. I know it was God. It had been God. Because if you look on the R-Rig, that's just the top, you think about me. And I was coming down so fast, people. I fell on my left side. A white light guided me to the ground. I said, wow. When I hit the ground, I said, well, I'm going to see Moses. I'm going to see somebody. <laughs> I don't know I had Moses on my mind. You know, I really did. I know I was going to see Jesus, but I, I always had, I believed in Moses, too. So people, when I hit the ground, when I hit the ground, God made a pillow for me. God made a pillow for me. And I'm telling you, I didn't feel nothing. I woke up. I looked at the people. There was about 10 roughnecks around me crying. I said, what y'all crying for? Call my mother-in-law, man. I don't see no blood in there. I'm gonna, I might be eternal bleeding or something, you know. I call my mother in law. That's the first one I call. Some people cut all my clothes off of me. I said, man, I, I wasn't expecting you know, I wasn't expecting to make it. They can drive a five mile an hour to the hospital. So I'm like, man, the only thing I can come, the 91 song, that's my seal. God put me on this, on this earth to help people. I'm finna move some things, you know. I gave the world 50 years. 50 years of my life in this music and all field working. This next 50 years is gonna be for Jesus, people. I ain't got much time. I can't play around. I told the pastor I ain't gonna be here for long, so I gotta be obedient. <laughs> so I'm finna get to the point right quick. I'm finna get to the point. But I want y'all really to. Uh, Y'all read the 91 song for me. I don't know. It's just it's sealed in my heart. And God, if you believe, he make it happen for you. But I want, I want to share this with y'all. Because I believe in the Holy Ghost. I got Pentecostal blood in me. I want y'all to think about something. I want y'all to close your eyes. Do this for me right now. Like we was with Jesus right now. And believe it can't nothing touch you. Say, no weapon of form against me shall prosper. 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 Believe that, people. I got, I got a few phrases. Close your eyes again. Say, faith without works is dead. 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 I mean, we got to work for Jesus. It's time to work, people. It's time to save souls. God wants to save souls. We got to go amongst the wolves out here and save some souls. Save one soul. I don't care. We got to save souls. We're not doing enough of that. God is tired right now. He's very tired. 
what's really going on in the world. Okay. Uh, I want to read y'all this. I'm, about, I'm done, Pastor. This, I'm not done. I got a lot of shit. I got to write a book. I got too much. I love this right here, man. But I want to talk about something about the Sodom and Gomorrah affair. We always, uh, we always look it back instead of staying, staying, you know, stand, uh, staying straight ahead. You know, that's why uh, Gamora turned into Saul, always looking back. You know, we got to stop looking back all the time, people. You know, uh, I'm talking about the Sodom and Gomorrah effect. I said, uh, God is tearing down all the, all the walls we worship in the world. Our God is jealous. Our God is not pleased with us because we have that Sodom and Gomorrah effect. Always looking back instead of trying to keep a straight path with God. And now he has grown tired of man's nonsense. He is going to get our attention, people. Or we will have to deal with the plagues of Egypt as they did in the days of Pharaoh. Once again, we're talking about the Simon Gamora thing. It won't be long past. I'm, I'm, I'll be finished by five minutes. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of studying, people, because it's time, playtime, I'm over with. It's time to bring the word of God. All right. Game on, brother. Game on. <laughs> Everybody better open their eyes and realize what's really going on. In three short months, just like God did in the plagues of Egypt. God has taken away everything we worship. God said, if you want to worship athletes, I will shut down the stadium. God said, if you want to worship magicians, I will shut down the civic centers. God said, if you want to worship actors, I will shut down the theaters. God said, if you want to worship money, I will shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. God said, if you don't worship, if you don't worship me, I will make it where you can't worship inside the church but outside. Which we have did already. Thank you, Pastor. If my people yes. who are called by my name yes. will humble themselves yes. and pray yes. and seek the word yes. and turn from their wicked ways, yes. then I will hear. Yes. I will hear from heaven yes. and will forgive their sin yes. and will heal their land. Yes. Maybe we need to take this time of isolation yes. from the distractions of the world yes. and have a personal revival where we can focus the only thing in the world that really matters is the Jesus Christ. This is for every, every believer in religion. I pray you find your relationship with God before he come back like he said he would. God does this, it does, God does this in the world where he is often overlooked by material things of the world. Worship by men and women. Our God is a loving God yes. and also a jealous God. Yes. Be good. So please keep it, keep this powerful holy words sealed in your hearts. Yes. Yes. And, be, and be so the angels. Yes. Keeping his ten commandments yes. to enter into the holy kingdom. Yes. Yes. Please stay away from the Sodom and Gomorrah effect. Uh -huh. Always looking back instead of looking straight ahead, people. Uh -huh. Keep God's, kingdom, keep God's kingdom clean, clean. And, the, and the God's uh, good spirit towards each other. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 No power and power is
said, he was actually, we were talking this yesterday. And I said, I, I got a spot for you on Sunday. Amen, I got a spot for you. Amen. I'd like to be a God and be a part of the life.
I don't know. I can sing an acapella. You gonna give me a, a note to start now? I don't I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able
me. Amen. Amen. about God and I looked at him and I knew and I looked at him and I said I think you're supposed to be a pastor I grew up Mormon we have bishops <laughs> but I told him I think you're supposed to be a pastor and he looked at me and he said I know I've been told my whole life and I've been fighting it oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so if we knew from that day forward. We both looked at each other, by the way, and we looked at our arms, and we were both covered in goosebumps. And I didn't know this man. I didn't know this man at all. But I knew that moment that there was something spiritually connecting us and that the Lord was speaking through me to him. And from that moment forward, it has been nothing but difficult. And... We tried to do the whole, we were, the Lord opened doors for us. He went to College of Biblical Studies to be a pastor. Um, I found out his past not long after that. His record is miles long of domestic abuse. But the Lord tells me he's going to protect me. He cheated on me. And he got physical with me. And I was the one that called the cops. He's in jail this very moment. And he's been in jail. And the Lord is working on him, and I believe it. No one else does. No one else. My family's against it. And the Lord told me, I'm going to protect you. I prepared you for this. And your husband is going to be a passion. He's going to stand up and not because of who he is, because of who he is. Not because of him, but because of him. And I'm going to stand up to the day I die for him. No one else. And I know that my husband has a past, but so do I. And so does every single one of us. And the thing is, it's not about us personally. It's about who he makes us into be. He does it all. We don't. And we're just vessels for him. And I just want to say, the reason, the moment that I knew, I mean, I knew, obviously, whenever he had told me and he spoke through me and he said he was going to be a pastor, but I'm not going to lie, looking at that past, looking at how he was treating me, looking how he was with my family, I mean, I did everything in my power to protect my son from what I went through as a child. Everything I could, I kept him away from so many people because I wanted to protect him and not make the same mistake. And I ended up with a man that did the same thing. And most people in situations like that, they will tell you, you're in the cycle. You're in the cycle. You need to get away from this man and you need to learn to love yourself. I love myself, but I love God more. And God made me this person. And he put me in a position to trust in him and I have to. I have to because I'm here for him. But this is the biggest thing. Whenever this all happened, whenever he grabbed me, I was pregnant. I was pregnant. And I was scared. And, but this is before I called the cops. But whenever, we weren't allowed to talk for 62 days. And during those 62 days, I'm telling you, I was done. I'm one of those people, you cheat on me, you put your hands on me, bye. I mean, that's just how it goes. <laughs> but he called me the, after those 62 days, and he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Just hear me out. He got locked up October 12th of 2019. 
he told me to look in the Bible at the 10th book, the 12th chapter, the 19th verse. I had an abortion. Horrible mistake. But I was terrified and I thought I was protecting that child. And I know this is real and I know this is raw. But this is the truth. But what that verse said, your child is dead. He was told. God didn't do it, but he allowed it because he was showing himself. And he was showing. But what I, my whole thing is, is the fact that he can heal every single one of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I believe, and I have to have faith, because I have to have that crazy faith enough to believe yeah. that yeah. if he can yeah. heal anyone, he can heal my husband. Oh, yeah. 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 And I'm going to break that. There's no more generational curse on our family. It's over and done with. Praise Jesus. We have a service now, y'all. There's healing for the broken heart. Yeah. That's the greatest miracle of all. Oh, yeah. Salvation and deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen.
It's alpha and omega. All right? Y'all can join me on this. God's going to do a move right now. So it goes, you are alpha. Representations of many churches over the last three days from many counties, many cities. And I believe that, that the representation, I was telling Olivia and I was telling Debbie this morning, I said, when I looked out in the face, the sea of faces, the rainbow of faces and the rainbows of color, I knew God was smiling down on this church, on this movement. The, the revival that, that's happening is, is going to continue through you. There's a, the revival starts in your heart, and it erupts, and you can't help but to drip revival wherever you go. The essence of Christ is on you and in you, and you can't help but to spill a little bit of him wherever you walk. You're, 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 we are willing vessels, and I see it in your eyes. Just sharing your lives. What's beautiful is we're sharing our lives with each other. Y'all learned a little bit about me. And some of you all finished my book, which uh, is amazing in two, two days. But you've learned a lot about me. And, and what God wants us to do is to share our lives with each other. Yeah. We should show each other's pains. We should show each other God's love. We should re be the hands and feet of Christ. One of the most powerful things you can be of Christ is an ear. When Olivia and I started ministering and, and, and her and I started a ministry, she, we would minister together and she'll, she'll watch and she'll go, wow, I talked a lot, obviously, because I talked a lot the last few days. She goes, you did a lot of listening as we ministered to that person. And according, when you flow with the Spirit, you do according to what the Spirit wants to do that day. Yeah. There's no formula, right? So when you're ministering, that God says, be quiet and listen. Mm. You be quiet and listen. Yeah. When God yeah. says, give him a hug, you give him a hug. Yeah. When God says, you lay your hands on him, you lay your hands on him. It's just so amazing as we begin to flow with the Holy Spirit. The New Testament, the new covenant, is about us and God, and God through us. Amen. That kind of brought back one of my uh, dreams. Like one of my dreams was to uh, 
to experience what it was like to be a bishop and have, have music playing behind me every, every word I say. <laughs> no, it's true. Man, yesterday, as we started to pray for people, I invited you all up and I turned around and to, to bless our amazing worship team. And I turned back around and the entire church was lined up. <laughs> that response, that response erupted something new. And I, was, I knew I was in for a longer night, but man, y'all are worth it. Y'all are worth it. Y'all wanted a little bit of what God was giving me, but tell you what, I promise, as I promised you, y'all are going to get double, triple portions over and over. It's going to be Amen. renewed every morning as you, as you wake up. Amen. God's going to flow through you each and every instant. You say yes and boldly step forward. I had a few people come up to me and say, man, I want your boldness. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> now, but when I, when, I looked at, when I looked at their faces, I said, I'm promising double portions of things today, so you're going to get a double portion of my bonus. You've got to say yes and, and do it. Yeah. My boldness isn't because of, some, of something I built up. It was my trust in God. Amen. So it's, in essence, it's not my boldness at all. I know he will answer when I step out. Yeah. I know he's going to speak when I open my mouth. Oh, yeah. You all are oracles of Christ. The, we, we, we went into the, the Old Testament and talked about prophecy then. And then the New Testament demonstrated by the perfect prophet, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Man, I'm, I'm just thrilled. Y'all receive me like family. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is better than I expected. My wife and I contested for this. We fasted for this. We prayed for this. I prayed myself to sleep every night last week. And I woke up middle of the night and praying still. I was surprised and I went to bed that, again, that night, still praying, and I woke up in the morning to go to work, still praying for this, for you. Amen. So what I'm saying over y'all is this is a new day for you. Yeah. This is a new beginning. You're renewed, you're restored, and you, you're endued with power. Yeah. You're infused with power. There's a new, like, it's like a new battery pack put into you. You ever had a flashlight and you're like, man, I, I thought this thing was brighter. When you put a new battery in it, suddenly you, you, you see the full potential come to life. Well, we have a battery pack in that's called the Holy Spirit that never runs out. And I understand now when God called us the light of the world. He was called the light of the world and he in turn said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Oh, yeah. You are the light of the world. Like the, the pastor said, no weapon formed against us would prosper. Because no weapon formed against us can exist in the light. You know, the weapon formed against us is a form of darkness. And darkness is, is a void of light. Darkness can't overtake light. When you walk in a room, know that you're, you're, you're glowing the light of Christ. And you're reflecting you're walking with his power. You're reflecting his likeness, and the enemy will flee. I think the greatest thing that's happening that happened this weekend is happening now is an is understanding of your identity. Amen. You're no longer sinners. You were sinners. Amen. You were. You are saved by grace. Amen. And you are renewed. And you are powerful. Amen. And you are mighty. Y'all, and then what's amazing is you believe it. The scripture that's 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 perfect for y'all right now is uh, Isaiah 60, 1 through 5. Some of y'all know it. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I'm changing that to the Lord, glory of the Lord has risen through you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness its people, but the Lord will rise up 
upon you, and the glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to your brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes, round about, and see. They all gather together, and they come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be carried in their arms. Then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will be will thrill with rejoice because the abundance of the sea will turn to you. The wealth of the nation will come to you. Amen. The power of a prophetic voice releases kingdom mindsets, kingdom culture. It brings down darkness. It brings down the works of the enemy. And I'm watching a family of believers believe it. I'm watching a family of believers watch what they say and speak what they hear. Amen. The enemy has no foothold on you anymore. Amen. Praise God. You've Praise got your foot on the enemy's neck. Yes. You know how weak the enemy is? You can simply resist the enemy and he flees. In the 90s, there was a saying that says, talk to the hand, right? Y'all know that? Especially the, I had a lot of girls say that to me when I asked them out. Hey, no, so, sorry, talk to the hand. I fleet. I was like, you know what? That was kind of embarrassing. That's how the enemy is. I had a vision one time. There was a bathtub. It wasn't a bathtub. It looked like an ocean. There was a, a little guy that looked like Napoleon sitting on a boat. And he kept on screaming, charge, charge, charge. And God says, the enemy says he's coming for you. And I went, oh no. What did I do? God said, watch. And then suddenly I was, I was looking at this toy in the bathtub. And the enemy was tiny. And God says, are you afraid of that? I'm telling you, the enemy comes to us in a, in a, in a ship. We're, we'll drown him. We'll drown him in, in, in the flood of God's glory and grace. Some of y'all asked while we were praying how to reach us, godmanifest.com, www.godmanifest.com. We're family. I love to be connected with y'all. I love, uh, y'all can find our Facebook page and everything from that page. But if y'all have prayers, requests, reach out to us. We have a forum for prayer that goes right to our email. One-on-one um, -on -one ministry, if you go, hey, you know, I just want to talk to someone who doesn't know me much, sign up. We have one-on-one -on -one ministry. We're family. And that's what family is about. Yeah. Being available for one another. Yeah. Loving one another. Uh, one thing that we do is we do dream interpretations. Where are my dreamers? You go to uh, godmanifest.com, click dream interpretation, the dream team. Drop in your dream, write it all out, and send it to us and we'll interpret it. We have a dream team. That's the part, dream interpretation is part of the prophetic gift. It's like translating a prophetic vision. And it starts with, Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah. is this you? Holy Spirit, what is important? Holy Spirit, what does it mean? The formula starts and ends with Holy Spirit. Yeah. I tell people when I, when I teach dream interpretation, maybe next time I'll come out, I'll, treat, I'll, I'll do a day on dream interpretation. I tell them, I said, throw away your, your dream interpretation Bibles and all these things and lean on the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. I believe God has, is, has breathed a new life into us. I see hope restored. I see hearts beating again. I see the bride of Christ waking up. So as you spiritual gifts. Know that spiritual gifts by design were given by God to be laid back down at his feet. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you imagine me a, a, when I grew up I had Nintendo and Sega. Uh, some of y'all younger people go Sega. Uh, but but I, I, wanted, I wanted a Sega. My brother bought me a Sega and he hands it to me. Can you imagine me going thank you so much I'm going to put it back at your feet. It makes no natural sense. 
But I promise you, if you take and you submit your gifts that he's given you back at his feet, yeah. there's, a, there's an increase. And you take that increase and you lay it back at his feet that with submission, say, hey, I don't know what to do with this because you do. And let me, let's just let me be the vessel. And, and there's an increase and a greater increase each time you go. It's about you and not me. You know what? I think what y'all liked about this weekend mainly was truth. Amen. 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 And what truth does is truth diffuses the lies of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And it diffuses the bombs that the enemy has put in your life. It diffuses the, the, our, our, our ability to be offended. Offense will kill relationships. The truth will fix it. There's a reformation happening. That's the word I'll keep on getting. That's why I leaned over to Olivia and the card. I'm like, reformation. Is, he talking about, is God talking about Martin Luther? Like Martin Reformation. But the, there's, a ref, there's a new reformation that's happening right now. And there's, there's a reformation happening at this church right now. And, and then the body of Christ is going to begin to be supercharged as you all go out and you all begin to, to share what God is saying in your life. And they all, I was talking about earlier that it all changed with an inward yes and an inward I believe. And then an outward expression. Like Brother Jason said, faith without works is dead. There's a, there has to be an outward expression. And love is an action. There should be an outward expression of love. When I was here praying, we're staying at Debbie's house. 9.30, she sent me a text message, y'all okay? Y'all coming home like a, like a mama hen waiting for her chicks. <laughs> That's love. Yeah. And, then, and then she said, you got three mamas here. You got Trish and Wanda there. Too. Three mamas are worried about y'all. Y'all okay? That's an outward expression of love. God had shown me this analogy, and then I found it in the Bible as well. But when you, when you injure a part of your body, your full attention goes to nursing that part. And there are some broken hearts and some, some hurt people that come through your church. And some of y'all may have pains in the future. And the body needs to pay attention and, and, and bring love and balm to that person. When you, when you stump your toe, you don't cut your toe off. You nurse it back to health. I don't like singing out loud, but the song was came to mind this morning when our, my wife and I were getting ready, and I've never sang it publicly before, and her and I will sing it privately, and and uh, I'm not a singer. I'm not a singer. I, it's uh, I've I've always worked in the prophetic. And I've, I've, I've asked and pleaded with God to, I said, man, I would love to have her gift in singing or, his, or their gift in, in, um, in instruments. I tried guitar forever and I could play one song. It's been 10 years. Um, it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, but the song is called Champion. Y'all know that song? I'm going to sing it over you. There's a, there's... One thing I learned about God is when you minister and you're willing to be vulnerable, the Holy Spirit can be the Holy Spirit. Because if you're doing things in your weakness, the Holy Spirit can show off. If you're doing things in your strength, you, you leave no room for the Holy Spirit. So it's called here. Okay. I tried hard, I tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you would choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve it. 
You take the broken things and raise them in glory. You are my champion. Giant falls when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. It's like, I, I was a Houston Oilers fan, y'all. Anyone like Houston Oilers? <laughs> you better, because he got bumped with his wife here. Uh, so when I watched the Oilers, it was Warren Moon. Blue Moon. And uh, man, he, could, he had an arm. But can you imagine, he threw a touchdown, and he accredited it to me. Can you imagine someone winning a championship, and they go, man, I can't believe you won this championship, Jonathan. When I was in the fire, I told you about the fire? Yes. I did, right? When I was in the fire and that black man kicked the door down and later on said, you're a hero because you kicked the door down and walked into the fire. That's my God. That's my God. Because that was God. When he said, that was me. And I'm like, what was you? And he said, the black man. I was a Buddhist boy, 15 years old. And Jesus Christ showed up as an old black man, kicked their door down, went into a fire on, in my place, and didn't give me credit for it. That's God. That's God. His victories are ours. He's conquered death. We've done it. He's conquered sickness. So we're, we've done it. I'm not afraid of sickness. You're not afraid of sickness. You're not afraid of unsafe family members are just family members waiting to be saved. Amen. They're not unsafe. They're just in waiting. Just ask God to show them an encounter. I think the church has been so, so schooled and churched. The song that you sang about bring me to the king. It's like I'm tired of being churched. I remember I was flowing in miracle signs and wondered until I joined a church. And the pastor said to me, Jonathan, all these things are great, but you need to sit and be quiet and learn before you can be used. And I believed him. And when God said, Jonathan and Olivia, start a church. And I said, I am not that person anymore. I can't. And God said, feed my sheep. And I said, I can't. I said, teach them prophecy. And I'm like, I haven't done it in years because this pastor told me not to. But I was listening to the voice of man over the voice of Christ. God. When God speaks, when he speaks a commandment, he releases a provision for it to happen. So the commandment over y'all is prophesy, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. Men, the hearts of the broken hearted. Yeah, yeah. When a man of God begins to speak over you, we're standing in the place of Christ because it says so in the Bible. Amen. Luckily for us, even when we're unable, Christ is able. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That song, that song, Blew my mind when I heard it because I wasn't that. That is my father. That is my God. Because my natural father wasn't like that at all. If your dad's in your room, don't raise your hand when I ask this question. But your dad is not in the room. How many of y'all have been hurt by bad parents, bad dads? So I'm not a father, but I am a father. Does that make sense? So as a father figure in our church today, I repent 
for not being a father. I'm sorry that father figures hurt you. I'm sorry that fathers weren't there for you. I am sorry on behalf of fathers for being silent. I'm sorry on behalf of fathers for not being there. God is healing the wounds of the fatherless and giving them, giving them fathers right now. God's opening the door. It's, so, it's hard for us to see God the Father when we have a wound from a father. But God's saying, through me right now, I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I betrayed your trust. I'm sorry that I couldn't hug you. I'm sorry for drinking too much. I'm sorry for beating you. I'm sorry for the things I've done to you. I'm repenting on behalf of the fathers so that the fathers in churches and in Christ can arise. God wants to see his children healed and whole and well and functioning strong. And I'm sorry to the mothers who had to fill the shoes of the fathers. Are there mothers here that had to fill the shoes of fathers? I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to fill the shoes. Those are some big shoes to fill. And you weren't created to do that. And you've done a great job. I woke up this morning and I was like, you want me to do what? <laughs> Repent for a fatherless for a fatherless generation. But when the fathers can say, I'm sorry, this generation can arise. And where I'm saying it now on behalf of all fathers. And God is saying, if you're willing, I'm able. Let me fill those shoes. Let me fill your heart. Let me embrace you. Let me repay the evil that was done to you with good. Let me bring you through that pain. I know this is a somber, this is like a heavier end to a three-day weekend. But it's much needed. I'm sorry, God, as a father, for forfeiting my right. I'm sorry for not being a voice. I'm sorry for not cheering you on. I'm sorry for disciplining you so harshly. I'm sorry for not showing you what you're worth. But in the eyes of Christ, you're priceless. God is saying, my daughter, my princess, my son, my prince, Y'all are kings and queens. Y'all are saints. Y'all are priests. Arise and accept your inheritance fully. I can see the faces. I can see hearts healing. I had to reconcile it out with God when God said, I said, who are you? And God says, your father. And I went, yeah. Let's, let's stick with God. And he says, I'm good. If you let me, I'll show you. And I said, okay. And from that point on, I realized God is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember one of the hardest trials I've ever gone through was I was running a, a design firm, a marketing firm for eight years. And while well, I was saved... I was freshly saved, so the first year and a half, two years, my parents didn't talk to me. They were upset I was Buddhist. And they only called me or texted me when they needed money or something. So it wasn't a conversation. So one day my phone rings, my brother was working night shifts. This is at the store where, where the woman got healed with a broken neck and I ministered the streets. This is my brother's phone number and I was about to take my team out to play pool. I pick up, I'm like, hey, David. And it was my mom. She said, David is injured. Come to the store. 
Last time I heard that, it was my, my uncle was injured. He was murdered. He was injured, he was murdered. So when we show up, he's dead. He was in a bath. So my thought was, man, someone killed my brother. So I, tell, I hand my team members my credit card and said, just go have fun. Two of my closest friends, my team members, said, we'll go with you, what's going on? And I said, I'm, I'm going to my store because I think my brother died. I get to my truck and the battery, the car wouldn't start. The battery would, we, I find out the next day completely zero, like zero power. Like God drained it because I was not in the mood to drive. So my friend said, looks like we have to go with you now and drive you. <laughs> so we're driving in the car, we're pulling up in third ward in front of my mom's store, sophomore market. Ambulances, fire trucks were everywhere. Police cars were everywhere. Lights were blinking everywhere. And I opened the door as it was going and I ran out. And I remember I was freshly saved looking into the backs of the, the police trucks, police cars. And I saw a woman and a child there in the back seat. And I pointed at her and I said, you killed my brother, you're dead. Then I ran to the first ambulance. I opened the, the back door. My brother was lying there. He sits up and he goes, Jonathan, his face was smashed. Mm. Eye socket shattered. Mm. Blood coming out of the bottom of his eye. He was attacked. There was a man that was on drugs that attacked my family. Mm. And then the ambulance, the, back, the backs were facing each other. I heard my, my mom, she called me by my Chinese name, Zin. You see it on my book, Z-I-N. It means uh, benevolence. Zin. I turned around. She said, I need my old Zin back. I need my old Jonathan. The enemy knew exactly what it took to call back what was already dead. <laughs> my mom says, avenge us. Make sure that person who tried to kill us. My mom was bruised, top of her head, all the way down to her stomach. She, was, she had a third degree concussion, I'll find out later. So I walk into this, I said, okay. And my brother goes, no. Because between he and I, he owns a gun shop in Houston, and, he's, and he, he looks like he grew up where he grew up. I don't look like that. Uh, so uh, if he's watching, no offense. You look very strong and mean. Uh, but anyways, so here my brother is lying there in bed screaming, no, Jonathan, no, 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 no. And he screams at my mom in Chinese. Jonathan is going to kill somebody because of you. Make them stop. My mom goes, so be it. So I walk into the store. My dad's sitting on the floor being, being treated by the EMS. He had a knot on his head from a crowbar. So my brother, shattered eye socket. My mother, third degree concussion. And my father, knot on his head, second degree concussion. And there is no way it was that woman and that child. And I walk in and I, and I started to curse God. You ever been there? You're so mad. How can you let this happen? I find out bad stuff doesn't happen because of Christ. Christ will bring you through it and bring good out of it. So I'm marching up and down my convenience store now, talking to God out loud. Big fireman. He's probably six foot six. He's like you, man. Big guy comes up and he grabs my arm. He goes, hey, brother. I turned, I looked at him, he's holding my arm, he goes, you need to breathe, you need to breathe, breathe. And I looked at him, I said, you do not want to touch me right now. And he saw it in my eyes, big guy. I'm five foot nine, so six foot four is huge to me, right? And I said, you do not want to touch me right now, sir. And I said, you better, you let go of me right now. And he goes, and he turns to the police officer, he said, hey, keep an eye on him. Something's about to happen. Keep an eye on them. And I'm marching up and down. My friend DJ is there. My friend James is there. And I'm still cursing God. How can you do this to me? You promised my family will be saved. And God says, after all I've done for you, this is how you repay me. I'm cursing him. And I pause. And I'm like, done for me? You attacked my family. God said, it was not me. And I said, 
My family is in the ambulance. My dad's being wheeled off. It is you. You could have stopped it. God said, it was not me, but this is how you repay me. And I paused, and I looked at my friend, and my friend goes, and everyone's watching me. The fire, the policemen, the firemen are staring at me going, this guy is about to crack. Because I'm screaming this out loud. I'm hearing an audible voice. They're not hearing it. And I'm talking, right? And then all of a sudden, God said, I'm a brand new Christian, so I didn't know the scripture. God said, Jonathan, pray for, for, pray for your enemy. And I scream out loud, pray for my enemy? And my friend DJ walked up to me, she goes, hey, Jay, hey, John, can I, hey, now wait, what? And he goes, I know you've been studying the Bible, that's scripture. And I looked at him and went, pray for your enemy is in scripture? Why the hell? How does that make any sense? And he goes, I, I, hey, man, I'm just, it's, it's in scripture. And I looked up at God and I went, In Jesus' name, I lift up the man who attacked my family. And I said, I command him, and also God showed me that he died in the ambulance. I said, I command him to come alive in the ambulance right now. And I sat there, and all of a sudden, my heart started to cry. And I said, I asked for this man's salvation. I command him, I command all the addictions in his life to go. I didn't know he was addicted to crap. I started praying over this man, and I said, when I was done, I stopped. The burdens of the world lifted. When you do what Christ tells you to do, even when it doesn't make sense, it's, it's, it's a lighter, it's, it's the lighter path to go. And I turned to the fireman, the big, the big guy, and he goes, you right, bro? And I went, yeah, Where, where's my family? And he said, uh, going to Bentop. Bentop's a hospital. And I said, uh, what do I need to do to get to them? And they're all just staring at me, tears in their eyes. A police officer, a, a, a young black police officer, she walks up to me and she goes, who are you talking to? And I went, God. And she goes, I thought so. And she's crying. And she goes, I've never seen God move like that. And she said, uh, so we got a call that the guy died on the ambulance. And then we just got a call again that he came back alive. And I went, and I'm thinking to myself, dang it. <laughs> and I grew up in the hood, so I'm like, man, this power in the word thing is, 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 is counteractive to my, to my um, natural nature. <laughs> so we get in our car, we drive to Ben Tal, we show up, and I walk in there, and I walk up to the nurse, hey, where is us? There's a man that came in who got shot. What happened to him? And she goes, oh, we can't tell you. And I'm like, third floor, I see you. I said, all right. And she goes, oh. Did you see it on my, I said, and I don't know exactly where he's at. And she goes, um, a security. And the security walks up to me and I went. She, he said, what are you planning? You shouldn't do it. And I said, that man hurt my family. Here I am, just prayed for his life. And the guy, the guy looks at me and, he, and my friend walks up to me, DJ does it again. He goes, what, what did God tell you to do in the store? And I'm looking at him like, dude. I already raised him from the dead once. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, prove him right enemy. And he said, you want me to pray with you? And I started to cry and I said, I don't know what to do. I said, I got so much anger in me right now. And I said, I want to kill this guy. I said, this, that's who I am. And he grabbed me and he goes, you are a new creation. And he says, I will agree with whatever you say, even if you want him to die. And I went, God doesn't want him to die. So I said, in Jesus' name, and then I saw him on the operating table, flatlined. I said, in Jesus' name, I came in this man to come alive. And I was like, Lord, obviously you love him. So we asked for his salvation because you love him, Lord. And I said, I thank you, Lord, that if he dies again, he will come back alive. I just speak life over him. And I was like, and I looked at my friend, and I cried on his shoulder. And I said, I just want to see my mom. Yeah. The doctor comes out and said, your mom wants to see you. I walk in there, and my brother goes, you're not arrested? <laughs> and I looked at him, and I'm like, and my brother does not look Asian. 
he doesn't have slanty eyes, he's six foot three, he's, he's, you know, now he is, at that point he was like 250 pounds of muscle. Um, and I looked at him and I said, man, at least half of you look Asian now, because his eyes are swollen shut. <laughs> and he, he starts laughing, he grabs his face, and my mom goes, Jonathan, that's, and then everyone in the room were white people, they're like, they just kind of stopped and I said, y'all can laugh, we're Asian, we're allowed to make fun of each other. <laughs> and I looked at the doctor and I said, but you can't say that joke again. You know? And my brother goes, you're the only one that can make me laugh in this situation like this. And my mom goes, in Chinese, she goes, you kill him? I looked at the mom and said, no, I raised him from the dead. <laughs> and I said, three times. And the doctor goes, the doctor leans over and she goes, so you're a minister? And I'm like, I guess so. And he says, and you're praying for the guy who attacked your family. It's now just a black doctor. And I said, yeah. And he goes, uh, I'm a Christian. If you want to, I can take you up to him. I was like, no, no, I, no, no I, can't, no, I can't see him. And he goes, no, no, but you're, you, you, I can give you updates. I, I know he just died, but he's back a lot. Like, hey. And I said, oh, okay. And he goes, you want to go in there, like, touch him or anything? And I went, like, like lay hands? And I went, I do not want to touch him. <laughs> and my form of laying hands, like I shared with y'all from the ghetto, is laying hands. And I was like, God, I am in jail. So, the man who attacked my family, we're, Third Ward is primarily a black neighborhood. 95% of our customers were black. That man attacked, our attacked us was from Dallas and accused our family of being racist. During the big, during the, the uh, Rita, the storm of Rita, we lowered all our prices. We cut 25% off our prices. We cut off profit margin. So we could serve our neighborhood. The neighborhood knew that. This man gets uh, an activist to come out and petition, protest, calling us racist. Said that we attacked him because he was racist. We were racist. The neighborhood came out, the prostitutes, the pimps, just the normal neighbors, the grandmas, the people I call mom and pop. They came out and they walked up to this man. Fox News was on, on him. And he go, here are my people. My buddy D, the, the drug dealer at the corner, he goes, I ain't your people. The Troms are our people. They, they were here for us when, when we needed them. Where the heck were you when we needed you? And he goes, oh, turn off the cameras. And he goes, get off this man's property right now, or, or we will make you get off. This is on Fox News. I'm watching it. And I was like, it was live. I was off. And then so I called. My brother, my, uh, my, uh, my mom's friend was working in the store. And he called, and they said, you won't believe what happened. The neighborhood came to our defense. See, there ain't no color in Christ. It was such a beautiful illustration for me because I was thinking to myself, I barely knew that neighborhood. And it was before my dad had cancer. A few months later, he gets cancer and I work at the store. And then Rita happens. No, no, Rita happened just before that. Yeah, Rita happened just before that. So when Rita happened, my mom goes, okay, so uh, what products should we raise prices on? And I said, raise, we're dropping prices. And my brother goes, we're dropping prices. And he, my mom goes, but all the businesses in Houston are raising prices for this hurricane. She said, I'm talking about 10 cents a piece only, not, not like a dollar. And I went, I looked at my brother and I said, if you raise a penny, I'm leaving. And my brother goes, I'm leaving too. And my dad goes, oh! How much you want to lower? And I was like, 10 to 25% on everything. My dad goes, why? And I said, well, this is our neighborhood. I said, these are our people. Christ's mindset completely changes how you think. The pro what profited us was a neighborhood seeing us as family. The finances came. We sold out of everything. We, there's, a, there's a radio station called 97.9 The Box. There's a, there, y'all know that radio station? There's a man named the Mad Hatter. Y'all know the Mad Hatter? Oh, they all Houston. So, the Mad Hatter calls my cell phone. I was on, I was on the radio, I didn't know. He goes, hey, this is, uh, this, is this Jonathan. I went, man, I'm in the middle of a hurricane right now. Uh, what's up? And I have a lot of customers. Who is this? Is everything okay? He goes, y'all, your store open? I went, you're a customer? How'd you get my 
how did you get my, my number? And he goes, this is a Mad Hatter for 97 on the box. And I went, the radio station? He goes, is it true that you load all your prices to serve third ward? And I said, yes, sir. I, said, I really need to go. And he goes, you buy? You have any, any products left? And I said, yeah, but not much food. And he goes, don't worry. We'll, we'll clear you out. And he goes, can, can I, can I, uh, can I announce you on the radio with your address? I said, sure. They came in, they bought everything. <laughs> People came in, they said, what do you got left? And I went, do rags? I'll buy eight. And I'm like, eight do rags? What do you got left? What do you got? I got uh, toothbrushes. Uh, I, I, I want to buy those toothbrushes. We, everything we cleared out. It took two weeks to, 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 to bring products back. Wow. <laughs> You know, there is no race war. There is no race war in Christ. Amen. I believe that when the world, when the U.S. and our cities and our states turn back to Christ, yeah. we won't see color. Amen. Amen. We're going to see family. We're going to yes. see brothers. Yes. We're going to see sisters. We're going to love one another. Yes. And I believe revival that's starting here is going to sweep the nation. Is that right? Or I say a quick prayer over y'all and I close. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for this body. We yes. thank you for the reviving you've done in our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for filling us with, with the fresh new oil, Lord, that we're overflowing. We thank you, Lord, that your power fills us. Your presence fills us. And we are in you. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that we are revival. Yes. We are prayer like, like, Dave, like King David was. He wasn't just a man of prayer. It says in scripture that the original origin says, I am prayer. So in Jesus' name, we are prayer. We are revival. We are healing. We are healed. We are breakthrough. So in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your reformation throughout our nation. We thank you, Lord, for touching each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, that today we, we rededicate each and every part of our lives, our hearts, our minds, Back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There are some people that talk to me that actually want to become members of this church. Amen. Now you know how.